Hi everyone! Today, we're going to learn about the parts and functions of a compound microscope. One of the most indispensable tools in studying biology is a microscope. Microscope is used to magnify objects that are too small to be seen by the naked eye. We use this for studying bacteria and other microorganisms. A compound microscope is a type of microscope that uses two or more lenses to produce a magnified image of an object known as a specimen, hence the name compound. There are two basic principles in using a microscope. First one is magnification and the next one is resolution. Now what's the difference? Magnification is the ability to make small objects seem larger, such as making a microscopic organism visible. In this example, we can compare the specimen viewed under the lower magnification and at a higher magnification. 4x means it is viewed 4 times its original size. 40x means it is viewed 40 times its original size. Resolution, on the other hand, is the ability to distinguish two objects from each other. Here we have an example of an image viewed under low resolution and at a high resolution. We can see clearly the object at a higher resolution. Now let us identify the different parts of a compound microscope. The parts of the microscope can be divided into three. The magnifying parts mechanical parts and illuminating parts. The magnifying parts are used to adjust and support the parts of the microscope. Mechanical parts are used to enlarge the specimen. And illuminating parts are used to provide light. Now let us identify the magnifying parts of the microscope. The first magnifying part is the ocular or the eyepiece. This is the part where one looks through to view the specimen. It also magnifies the image of the object that has been magnified by the objective. It usually ranges from 5x to 15x. The second magnifying part of the microscope are the objectives. The objectives are the metal cylinders attached below the nose piece and contains lenses. There are two common objectives found in a compound microscope, the low-power objective or LPO and high-power objective or HPO. The low-power objective gives the lowest magnification which is usually 10 times the original size. The HPO on the other hand is usually 40 times or 43 times. In this picture, we can see the difference between the specimen viewed under LPO and an image viewed under HPO. Now, let's have the mechanical parts of a microscope. The first one, we have the draw tube. The draw tube holds the ocular. The next one is the body tube. The body tube connects the eyepiece to the revolving nose piece with the objectives. The next one we have the revolving nose piece. The revolving nose piece facilitates the changing of objectives like switching from LPO to HPO or vice versa. The next one is the coarse adjustment knob. The coarse adjustment knob raises or lowers the body tube to bring the object in focus. This one is used when focusing under the low power objective. In using the force adjustment knob, one should look at the side to avoid breaking the slide. The next one we have fine adjustment knob. This is the smaller knob used to focus the image further. This is used when focusing under the high power objective. The next one is the arm. The arm supports the body tube and it is where the microscope is held. The other one is the base. The base is the bottom part that supports the entire microscope. These two parts are very important in handling the microscope properly. Next one we have the stage. 
This stage refers to the platform where object to be examined is placed. This is where you put the slide for observation under the microscope. Next one, we have the stage clips. The stage clips help secure the specimen to the stage while viewing under the microscope. Next to the stage clip, we have the inclination joint. The inclination joint allows tilting of the microscope for the convenience of the user. Next one, we have the pillar. Pillar is the part above the base that supports the other parts of the microscope. Now let's move to the illuminating parts of the microscope. The first one here we have the mirror. The mirror is used to gather and direct light in order to illuminate the object. One should be careful with this one because direct sunlight can also harm the eyes. Another illuminating part of the microscope is the diaphragm. The diaphragm regulates the amount of light reflected into the specimen. The bigger the opening, the greater is the amount of light reflected. In what ways would the microscope contribute to the study of different objects and organisms? The microscope gives an enlarged view of objects and organisms. Detailed studies of their complex structure and consequently their functions is possible using this equipment. It also enables one to see and observe organisms that are not visible using the unaided eye. 